heading into this week, one of the games I was most interested in seeing how it was going to go was the Miami Dolphins. Really, not even so much about the Chiefs. I just wanted to see how Miami would play against a team that's currently at the top of the league uh, in terms of record. And, you know, most people believe they're Super Bowl favorites. And Miami played well. And specifically, I want to talk about Tua and what he was able to do because there was definitely some ups and some downs. It was off to a bit of a slow start. But at the same time, I thought there was even some good in the beginning. So like on this play, this seems like the kind of play that Miami really wants to run constantly or just plays like this, not this one exactly. But it's going to be a cover two man that the Kansas City Chiefs are in. They like to play a lot of cover two. They like to have two safeties deep. And so throwing over the middle makes some sense. This is going to be a pick play, which works very well against man coverage. And this is absolutely a play that could work for Miami. Tua takes a snap, and the pick just works out perfectly. They get a receiver wide open, so Tua barely even has to do much, but he does make a good throw that allows his receiver to make the grab and continue running down the field. So, again, not exactly uh, something crazy, but he, he got the job done, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. So little plays like that, Tua can be very good at, and I think that's what Miami wants to do a lot of. I also like this one, where this one's going to be definitely a much higher degree of difficulty type play. It's going to be a play action rollout to the bottom of the screen, which is to Tua's left. And there's going to be multiple players who are running routes that could get open against this type of coverage. And they're in the direction that Tua is rolling out towards. To all you John Gruden fans out there, this is actually very similar to a spider 2 y banana concept. But... Uh, anyways, take a look at what happens. Tua takes a snap, he fakes the handoff, and this is going to be well covered by Kansas City. You see they, again, partially because of the man coverage, the two players who are deep aren't necessarily as open as they would have been if it were, say, zone. But one thing worth noting is that I've circled three players, and you notice there were only two routes I had on the screen, really. So, who's the third player? Well, that was a tight end who was just blocking on this play. And since he was just blocking, the Kansas City player who was in charge of covering him ended up staying deep. So, in the circle all the way to the left, there is a player getting double covered. And in the circle in the middle, there is just one-on-one -on -one coverage. And then all the way to the right, there is a player who's wide open. The issue is that Tua isn't looking to throw to him. You know, Tua's reads basically go from left to right. And honestly, his third read on this play is to run the ball before he thinks about throwing to his blocking tight end on this play. Despite all of that, Tua does read this well, and he notices where he could throw this ball to. On top of this, this is a very difficult throw to make because he's throwing across his body right here. But him being a lefty makes it a little bit easier. And so he's going to take this chance. He makes a perfect throw and they're able to get a touchdown. So good read from him and good throw from him. It was both. So, I mean, yeah, these won't necessarily blow you away. But you know what? There was some good plays. And I, I do think that you give him some credit. But at the end of the day, just as an offense, as a unit for Miami, they ended up with 10 points in their first 11 possessions, and one of those possessions was a safety. So they really only had a net positive of 8 points in 11 possessions. That's really bad. I mean, the Jets score over a point per possession, so that's not very good whatsoever. And honestly, sometimes 11 possessions in a game is all you'll get. And kind of the nice thing about playing Kansas City is they score so quickly sometimes that it will mean that you get more possessions and an opportunity to come back, which happened with Miami. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely not going to get it done, that slow start. And I want to talk about what went wrong early on before I talk about what went right at the end. So, yeah, uh, it wasn't all his fault for sure. Like on this one, what's going to happen here is this is going to be a man coverage play. It's, again, going to be a cover two play. But, you know, Kansas City, their safeties are going to be much further to the middle of the field. That typically likes to be how they do it. So Devontae Parker, who's running a deep route that's going to get sort of towards the outside, this could end up in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Watch, once this play starts, Parker is going to get open right here. So there is a window where Tua can make this throw. He's passed the safety already, and so Tua is going to take this chance, as he should. This is the good chance for him to take. Tua makes the throw, and Parker really just drops the one in the end zone. That was a very catchable ball. There was a few of those, to be honest. There were a few catchable balls balls that just didn't go Miami's way and that was a, a bit of how they sort of were off to a slow start and I'm not necessarily saying they were all like just wide open drops but sometimes they were just difficult plays that the receivers didn't make and it's hard to really blame Tua too much for that. Now there are plays you can put some blame on him and I think this one's a good example of one that you can't you shouldn't really kill him for it wasn't necessarily bad but 
you can see how a different quarterback would have played this certain play better. It's a cover two zone, and on paper, there's a few routes that look good if you just if you already know what the coverage is. There's a route over in the middle. That one looks good. You know, going to get in the eye of the storm area in the middle of the field. You also have Devontae Parker, who's lined up all the way to two his right, who's going to be running a route uh, that's going to eventually get over the middle, but it's underneath the safeties. That's a play that could work out. There's also a curl route to to his left that could work, and you have a couple checkdowns. So plenty of options on this play. There's no real clear that should be your first read, and I think you see veteran quarterbacks sort of figure this stuff out quicker than rookie quarterbacks do. Tua takes the snap, and he's going to look over the middle, which I actually understand. I think there's logic there, but really that's not open. I've circled all five of the eligible receivers. The three black circles are the players who aren't open. The two yellow circles are the ones that are. He has a check down to his left, Tua does, and Devontae Parker is open to his right. But the thing is, is that Tua just, he's not looking in their direction. He's looking over the middle, and really the two first reads he checked on this play both just weren't open. Tua eventually hangs on to the ball for too long and even steps up in the pocket, which kind of just, he stepped up into pressure, which resulted in a sack. I'm not going to kill him for that play. I'm not. I mean, you know, he's a rookie player, and the first couple of reads happened to not be open. He wasn't able to get to a read that was open. That's fine, but... You do see someone that's a veteran player, they don't do that as often. You know, when they make their first read, it tends to be open more often than not because they've just been in the NFL for a while and they know how their players operate. Tua is in his first year in the NFL, and a lot of the players he played with in this game are guys he hasn't gotten too many snaps with. So he's just trying to figure out who's going to get open on these routes more and more and where the defense might be covering more because you got to learn about the defensive players as well. So... I think year, year three Tua will be better at these kind of things, but even rookie year Tua, it's hard to put too much blame on him for that. An element of it is luck, it really is, and it's just sometimes you get unlucky and the read you look at happens to not be the one that got open. Even his interception I didn't think was bad. It's going to be man coverage and this is the route concept, so really there's only going to be one safety deep and deep is relative on this one because it's Tyron Matthew who is going to run deep and as you see, he's currently lined up only a couple yards past the line of scrimmage so with a deep route it could absolutely get open. Tua takes the snap and despite the heavy blitz he steps around pressure so good job by him there and now you see that there is a receiver who is open. He has this opportunity right here and with a perfect throw this could end up in a touchdown. At the very least it's probably going to end up with a really big gain if Tua can make a good throw. Tua's throw to be honest, it was a bit underthrown. It was still catchable, and he kind of got a bad break there with it getting ended up as an interception. It was a bit underthrown. It also was 45 yards down the field, so that is a bit understandable. But, you know, we're living in an NFL right now where you got to throw the ball 50 yards down the field sometimes, and if he put a little bit more air under that, it might have been a touchdown. Uh, but at the same time, that's a total nitpick. Really, this is kind of a, no one's going to blame Tua for this play if it wasn't an interception. The interception is the only reason why anyone even remembers this play, so I'm not going to get on him too much for that. I thought it was actually a pretty good throw. It, he gave his receiver a chance and got a bad break. It happens. If I had to pick a personal least favorite play from Tua against Kansas City, it would have been this one. It's a cover three zone that Kansas City is in. And for Miami, they're going to run a play action. And they have two receivers on both sidelines just running deep routes. So that's kind of going to just clear out Kansas City's players who are covering deep. They also have another player who's going to run over the middle underneath the safety. And so that's really the route I would want to throw to here. That's kind of how play action is often built around is a route like that over the middle. Another route that's important to mention here is Tua has a tight end who's running a check down route. So that's all, you know, that's your safety valve. You have that uh, that you can throw to as well. Also, an important thing worth noting, this is second down and 12. So very important that you at least gain some yards, create a, an achievable third down, even if you don't actually get the first down on this play. Tua takes a snap, he fakes the handoff, and he looks over, and again, this route that I feel like should have been his first read is open. He should make this throw, but he's just not looking in that direction. He wants to throw to the check down, which I just, I don't fully understand, to be honest. There's also pressure coming immediately, so uh, maybe Tua just wanted to try and get rid of this ball, and he was trying to just throw it towards the check down's feet to just, you know, get rid of the ball. He didn't like what he saw 
further deep, but I don't know why, because there's a wide open window. That's a throw he should make. Instead, Tua is going to get sacked here for a safety, and that was a big swing in this game. It really was, and if he doesn't get sacked there, who knows? Maybe they end up winning the game because, obviously, Kansas City was able to kick a field goal to go up nine points. It would have been seven points. Of course, the whole game changes if the score is different, but still. It's not a disaster, and to be honest, there's only a couple of plays like that I saw, which is actually really impressive. Most rookies, you'll find like a dozen or two dozen of those types of plays uh, in, in any select game. For Tua, there's only a small handful. So you can find those in, honestly, you can find those in any player's game. You can find those in Tom Brady's tape. Like, you can see those types of plays, so I don't think it's a big deal whatsoever. I think it's totally fine. And also, the line has to protect better. Like, on this one, you're going to see that to his left tap, left guard is having a one-on-one -on -one matchup right here, and it's not going to go too well. As you see, just immediate pressure. I mean, a good move by 98 there, but still, for Tua, there's nothing you can do on that play, and sacks can kill a drive, and when you're getting sacked immediately, that's a real problem. So yeah, that's a lot of what went wrong early on. It was some bad offensive line play. Tua deserved some blame, but as a whole, he played pretty well. The receivers didn't help him out a ton, so there was a lot working against him. I thought Tua was definitely not to blame for the slow start, but a slow start is a slow start. However, it did not stay that way. As we all know, it eventually got a lot better. And what went right? Well, really, it was kind of just Tua got his fist magic on, so to speak. He started taking chances. Like on this one, it's going to be a cover two man play, and he has a receiver running around that could get open before he gets to where the safety is. There definitely is a window where this could work, but it's certainly not something that's like an amazing route against this type of coverage, largely because there are two safeties. So for Tua, he would have to make this throw relatively quickly if he does want to make it. Once this play starts, there's going to be pretty immediate pressure, so Tua has to start running. On top of this, there is an opening, not a wide open opening, but there is an opening right here, uh, and, you know, the safety is actually pretty far away, so you're in a decent shot, decent position there, but yeah, as a whole, this is definitely not a wide open play, and Tua is on the run, so it's going to be very difficult for him to make this throw, but again, in this situation, you might as well start taking some chances. You're down 20 points with 13 minutes left, so throw this ball and see what happens. Why not? And what's going to end up happening is that you're going to see a big completion. It was a good job, good catch right there, but that's what happens when you throw the ball deep. Sometimes your players can make plays even when their offense was so banged up in the fourth quarter as it was. This play was another one. It was on that very same drive. It's going to be, again, cover two man, and Tua has a receiver running deep, and he is going to take a look in that direction. Once this play starts, again, you notice that there is maybe a small window where he can make this throw. You can sort of see what he sees because the player he wants to throw to is currently, he has a step on his assigned man, but there's also a safety who has a step on him. So there's kind of just, it's going to take basically a perfect throw for this to be made. On top of this, the other safety for Kansas City reads this and he's going to try and get into the play as well. So this is essentially throwing into triple coverage right here. But again, it's the situation. Take some chances and see what happens. Maybe you can find a way to throw yourself back into the football game. Tua makes this throw, and somehow it ends up in a completion. I mean, that's just a perfect throw and a great job for Miami. There is an element of luck in that as well, because if Tua made that throw 10 times, he's not completing it all 10 times, so a little bit lucky that it worked out. But you know what? Tua is the kind of quarterback who he can at least make those throws maybe 7 out of 10 times, which is better than a lot of guys, which is nice to see. The reality is you're not going to see someone be able to make those types of throws throughout the course of a season or even throughout the course of a game. There's a very small chance that you'll be able to do that consistently. I mean, if Tua is able to make those throws consistently, he would be the first player in NFL history. Not even Mahomes can do that. You got to, you know, get more separation more consistently. There's no denying that. But it is nice to see that Tua can at least, he's at least capable of making those types of plays. And it almost makes you wonder, if Miami took some more chances early on, would they have had a chance to win this game if they were able to score some more points in that, you know, first block I keep talking about, the first, the first 11 possessions? I don't know. And it is hard to say, but at the end of the day, I think you got to give Miami some credit for at least keeping it close. And I thought Tua was good and Tua continues to improve. I think he's going to continue to improve throughout the course of this season. You do have to look on the flip side and say they had an opportunity to win this game and weren't able to do so. 
and that's you know at the end of the day a loss is a loss and they're gonna have to fight to get into the playoffs uh from here they might have to win all three of their games but at the same time i think they're capable of doing it so it'll be interesting to see what they do down the stretch that's what i think what do you guys think let me know in the comments below i always love hearing from you and of course as always thanks for watching